Hey folks, this is Kyle Wilkinson with Ellensburg Angler. Today we will be tying a Chubby Chernobyl. It is one of our favorite dry fly patterns. Um, it's a great attractor pattern. It could be just about anything. Uh, we'll start fishing this pattern in the springtime to imitate the squala stone fly. Uh, could, and then as we go later into the spring, it could even be a green drake, could be a salmon fly as we get into summer could be a grasshopper, it could be a summer stone fly, and then as we get into the fall, it could even be an October caddis. So in a variety of colors and sizes, this fly could imitate uh, just about any of the large uh, dry flies that we see on the Yakima River and some of the tributaries like the Natchez. Uh, this is also a great pattern to uh, fish with a dry dropper setup. It flows really high um, on the surface and it will suspend a fairly heavy dropper. So you can cover both the surface and subsurface uh, depending on uh, where the fish are looking for insects, uh, time of year, time of day. Um, this hook that I have here in the vise now is just a size 10 hopper hooked or curved dry fly hook. This is about the smallest size we'll fish Chubby Chernobyl. This is about the size uh, we're fishing for the squall stone flies here towards the end of March into April. Um, I've already smashed the barb. I put it in the vise and the thread I'm going to be using today is just some size 10, excuse me, size 8 aught black unit thread in black. And all I'm going to do to start this fly is uh, attach the thread Start wrapping the thread just behind the eye and work it backwards towards the bend of the hook. I'm going to take a pair of scissors and I'm going to cut the, the excess thread here. Go back just a little bit further into the bend of the hook. And now I'm going to get some crystal flash for the tail. So I got my crystal flash here. And we're going to put some of that out the back of the fly to add a little bit of flash to the tail to kind of look like a, like a wing when it's on the water. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my flash and I'm gonna do about, measure about the length of the hook shank. And I'm gonna tie this down. So it's gonna look something like that where you got tag end here, the rest of the flash going down the back. I'm gonna take this tag in, fold it over, and anchor it so it's coming out the back just like this and then I'm going to cut my excess crystal flash so they're about the same length so you've got two pieces of flash coming out the back I'm going to repeat this process a few times to create a large amount of this crystal flash coming straight out the back so again bring a tag forward anchoring it down and cutting the excess back so about a hook shanks worth tag here excess fold the tag end back, anchor it down. And that should be enough for about this size fly. This, they're all about the same size here of the flash on this tail end. From here, I'm going to build up the body of the fly. You can do this in several different colors. Uh, you could do a green or a peacock color, something kind of like this to imitate more of a squalus stone because they're more of that greenish yellow color in the spring. Uh, another one of our favorites is this purple color. This is just a semi-seal uh, violet. Any kind of purple is a really good pattern here in the Yakima. You could also do an orange color dubbing for a salmon fly or a stone fly or grasshopper. You could do yellow, you could do pink, sometimes a royal. So a peacock and a red can be a good color. Um, just any, any color that kind of matches the insect is, uh, will be a really great one for the Chubby Chernobyl. Very versatile. You can also switch up the color of foam. But today I'm gonna to do the purple and I'm gonna do a black foam. That's one of my personal favorites. I know uh, some of the other guys on, the, on our guide staff like to throw the purple and black chubby throughout the year. Uh, so what I'm gonna do to start is I'm gonna take this purple or excuse me, violet semi-seal. I'm gonna take a big pinch of this dubbing. I'm just gonna dub it straight onto the thread. I really never use dubbing wax. I just can just rub it right onto the thread I'm going to start back here at the base of this crystal flash. I'm just going to start wrapping and creating the body of this fly. I'm going to start wrapping back towards the eye of the hook back here. Take another pinch of this dubbing. Dub it on the tying thread. I'm going to start working my way towards the front.
fairly even body, it doesn't have to be perfect. Once I get right behind that eye, take my whip finishing tool, I'm gonna do a couple sets of whip finishes here. Because a lot of times you can fish a chubby Chernobyl through several fish, um, just because they're so strong. I'm gonna do one more. And one way that we can prolong the life of these flies is to create a couple uh, sets of whip finishes to really strengthen um, our fly and make it last longer. So that is the body. Again, we've got some crystal flash coming out the back, kind of acts as a reflective wing on the surface. And then we've got the body of that violet semi seal. So I'm gonna take my thread again. I'm gonna come right back, the, the hook point's right here. I'm gonna start right about where the hook point is on top of the fly. And I'm just going to wrap my thread over the body, start back there. And now I'm gonna tie on this black three millimeter foam. You can really use um, any color foam, like I said. I like this black and purple combo. This is just kind of generic black fly tying foam. Um, you can see here where I've cut one out before, I'm gonna cut out about that size of a piece of foam for this size of hook. Cut a rectangle out, about like that. It doesn't have to be perfect. I want, it, this is a good length. I'm gonna have to do a little bit of trimming, but I don't wanna have this blocky square. I'm gonna trim this down a little bit so it's a little more rounded. So I'm just gonna take the corners and cut the corners just a smidgen. It's a little pointy now, so I'm just gonna take the scissors and cut that point off. Make it a little bit more rounded, something like that. I'm gonna lay it on top of the fly, and I want this end of the end of the foam to go just a little bit past the bend of the hook. And I'm gonna capture that with my thread. Go two or three really tight wraps. So it's gonna look something like that. But now I'm gonna wrap behind this tail flap back over the top. This is just really securing it to the hook so it doesn't move around too much. It might spin a little bit on the hook, but not, not so much that it's gonna ruin your fly. So that's what that's gonna look like. Now I'm gonna tie in uh, my back wing. It's a little bit smaller. I'm gonna be using this uh, floating white yarn material, poly yarn, um, and it's going to really help our fly stay buoyant when it gets wet, and it's also going to make it really easy to see on the surface, whether you're running as a dry fly or as a dry dropper. I'm just gonna take a little bit of this line, not very much, because you have this yarn, just a smidgen, and that's all I'm gonna be using for the back part of the wing. I'm just gonna capture this back here over the top of the foam. Two or three really strong wraps hold it down, just like that. Then I'm gonna grab this wing and I'm gonna fold it down towards the back. And I'm gonna capture the base of that with my thread. It may not capture very well. This one's actually laying pretty down pretty good. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take some leg material. This is just some brown silicone legs. Um, I like to use rubber personally on my chubbies, but uh, since I've been stuck in the house, I'm kind of running out of my rubber. I don't have any. Silicon still works well. Um, and what this does, it sits on the surface, uh, kind of flush with the film, and it'll just add a little bit of movement on the surface. You can see right here, and that'll just really attract the fish. They'll see the ripples on the surface. It looks like a live insect kicking its legs around, trying to get back to the bank because it knows that it's not safe on the water and that's just gonna come up and the fish are gonna eat that because they see those moving legs. So I'm just gonna grab this piece of brown silicon and I'm gonna have this tag end coming back towards the front of the hook. I'm just gonna capture it right here on the side. And as you can see, this silicon leg kind of has a direction it wants to point, right? So if I twist it like this, it wants to go that way. If I twist it like this, it wants to go that way. When I tie this on the hook, I want to tie it so that this concave side is pointing towards me. So that's pointing away from the fly and that'll help to bend the legs straight out instead of straight in. So something like that. So you can see where they, it wants to point away the whole, it wants to kind of point away and not towards the fly. And I want to trim this excess just about even. So it looks something kind of like that. I'll make sure that's anchored down good. Now I'm gonna rotate my fly in the vise. I'm gonna do the same thing. I want those legs to be pointing away from the fly. 
And they can point down or point up as long as they're not pointing straight into the fly. About the same length here. So it's gonna look something like that at the back end. Now I want to cover my thread wraps. I'm just going to take another pinch of this violet semi seal and dub it onto the thread. About like that. And I'm just gonna go over the base of the wing and those sets of legs I tied in, a couple tight wraps, hold it in place. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull everything back and I'm gonna wrap forward towards the hook eye over the body. You can fold that down, you can kinda see what it looks like. I wanna make sure these legs are about in the middle of the foam when it lays down. So I might need to adjust those a little bit. And that is the back part of our chubby. Now I'm gonna lay this black foam over the top and I'm gonna secure it down. I'm gonna make just a little bit behind the hook eye. I don't wanna crowd that hook eye too much. I'm just gonna capture that foam the same way I did last time. Couple wraps in front, couple wraps on top. And now I'm going to trim this front end of the foam. I'm just going to have about two times the length of the hook eye forward and I want to just round it a little bit so it's not too blocky. I cut this foam overall a little skinnier. As you can see there's not too much difference, uh, there's not too much space between this and the edge of the, the body and the edge of the foam. It could be a little bit wider, kind of depends. This could be a little bit slimmer profile chubby. Uh, I'm going to do the same thing I did in the back. I'm going to put my wing on. I'm going to cut a little bit bigger piece of this poly yarn. About like this and I want to tie it in so that the end of my wing is about comes about to the end of the back wing. I'm just going to secure this down. I'm going to fold this excess over, kind of capture it at the base and then trim that excess so it's right at the end and then I'm going to do the same thing where I cut this down, tie it down, fold it over and that's just going to help our fly be a little more buoyant and it's going to be a little bit more yarn on there so that we can see our fly really well when it's on the surface of the water. So it looks something kind of like that. Right now this piece is being a little stubborn. When I put dubbing it'll kind of sit back a little bit. So I'm going to go ahead and do the same process with the legs. Again, having those legs pointing out, not in towards the fly about the same length as the ones in the back. It's okay if they overlap a little bit. Doesn't have to be perfect, especially on these smaller flies. They're gonna be, those legs are gonna be crowding each other a little bit. You know what, I'm just gonna cut this poly yarn out because it's just getting in the way. All right, now that's taken care of. Come over to the other side. I'm rotating the fly and the vise. And I'm gonna tie these in again so those are pointing out. Pull it tight. And that's what she's looking like so far. I'm gonna take a little bit of this dubbing again. I'm just gonna go over my thread wraps. And that'll just kinda of lock everything in place. Pull my legs a little bit so they're even in the middle of that foam. They don't have to be perfect. Fish don't care if they're perfect. Fishermen care if they're perfect. Do one more wrap over the top and then I'm gonna come up under, underneath this foam here, right behind the hook eye. So now I'm off with the foam here onto the hook. I take my whip finish tool, I'm gonna do a couple sets of whip finishes just behind the hook eye underneath the foam. One set, I'm gonna do another set. And I'm gonna cut it. We're almost done here. I'm gonna go ahead, kind of rotate this fly in the vise, make sure these legs are where I want them in the foam. It's a little lopsided, but again, the fish don't really care. Now I'm gonna take my super expensive uh, dubbing brush. It's a popsicle stick with a piece of Velcro glued on the end of it. I'm just gonna kind of pick this wing material so it's separated a little bit. And then I'm gonna take the brush, I'm gonna angle it back. So it's separated and it's back, so that'll help it, uh, when you put your floating on there, it'll help absorb more floating, so it's, it uh, floats better on the water. 
a little bit bushier, you can see it a little bit better. Make sure everything's straight again. It's a little cockeyed, but that's okay. Fish still gonna eat it. And that is the chubby Chernobyl. In a size 10, I would fish this more for like a squala, maybe some grasshoppers, um, some of the smaller tributaries like the Natchez might be a good fly. And I'll tie it even bigger into the summer when we've got large stone flies flying around. But that is a chubby Chernobyl in black and purple. Again, you can tie this in different colors and different sizes, depending on the time of year and what insects you want to imitate with it. The black and purple is a great Yakima color. And again, size, this is a size 10. You can tie it a little bigger. You can tie it even smaller if you wanted to. Great attractor pattern. You can run a dropper off of it and it'll keep it floating pretty high. That is the chubby Chernobyl.